So hi there. I just wanted to talk to you about a couple of things. Um, my friend Brian, <laughs> Rebel TV, Polar Bear, Truth Cafe, came over to the U.S. for a couple of months. And I got to meet him, which I was very lucky. He's a good guy. He uh, did a live stream the other day, and not nearly enough of you were there. I don't know if you know him, but you're gonna. And he had some wisdom about our nation, the nation in which we live. Many, many years ago, I started looking into our nation's history. And I discovered it was mostly different than what I'd been taught. And then the systems of government worked differently than I was taught. And that was many, many years ago. And then I did notice that we were being experimented on from the sky in some way. I don't know the exact truth, but I know it's there. And so I started a YouTube channel. And it didn't get anywhere. And nothing changed. And 2018, I actually wrote a book about what I'd learned. And it's not a great book, but, you know, I did it. And I thought, okay, people will read this and we will begin to learn things about our nation and which direction we want to take it. And nothing happened. Nothing changed. So I'm going to put this video out with Brian's wisdom and his observations of what is America. He's from Denmark. And he's a smart guy. He's very smart. He is a world champion jujitsu opponent. I don't know what you not a player. He, he does jujitsu and he's won world championships. He's great. Um, very kind guy. He is looking at the tyranny that we're seeing from the COVID thing, from the selection in the U.S. That was a total shit show, that debate. Neither one of those men should even be near the title of president. But if you know how the system works, you know why they're there. And if you don't know how the system works, then, you know, hit me up in the community tab, send me an email, and we can talk about it as best I can for as much as I know. But he doesn't want worldwide tyranny. And neither do I. So I want to share this. I, it's not going to change the world. I get that. But he just has some some things that I think you should hear. So, uh, with that being said, I am going to just play the video, and if I think up anything else, then I will come back and say it. And if I don't think up anything else, thank you for watching. Appreciate your comments, and I hope you all have a great day. All good. All right. As you know, I've been in the United States for a couple of months. I've seen a lot of weird stuff. Um, I've seen good stuff. I've seen bad stuff. I've seen the total, totally ugly stuff. You know, so it's kind of the good, the bad, and the ugly. So um, I let you guys decide what to start with. Even though I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> Alright, as long as the sound is good, we we, we should be alright. But, yeah, the good, the bad and the ugly. Uh, the good stuff is that you have a... You have a, a great country. Uh, kind of like the the freedom, the rights that you still have, even though you feel you don't have them, you know, they're still here. You just need to grasp them. And I think um, a little fight would would be in, in order, because that's actually how I see America. I see it as the final frontier, you know, and, and what I've seen while I've been here uh, is kind of discouraging. In a, in a sense, because I see you as, well, the world's protector. You are the last obstacle they have to, to breach, 
in order to do their one world government and uh, yeah you're in bad shape right now so <clears throat> the good thing is that you still have natural bone rights the bad thing is um, that you kind of let them slip out of your hands and uh, yeah that is worrying because if we don't have America, you know, I think they can do whatever the fuck they want. I think that already, but they believe that America is a threat. So, uh, so yeah, I think they got surprised on how easy COVID went back in the day. Uh, but see, that's what we already do. We're doing back in the day. It's it's fucking four years ago. You know. Not even, it stopped two years ago. So, I kind of think it's... It's apparent that you get back on track and that you start fighting for your country because right now it's slipping through your fingers. I think they're hiding it from you. I think they're hiding the state of your country from you. And I think... Americans have been too complacent, so they don't see it, they don't want to see it, they want to line their own pockets, they want to keep their family safe, and then all that's good. But the way to do it is to fight the tyranny. So apparently I do have more to say. Um, growing up as Gen X, and you can go watch videos, and if you're Gen X, you know what we grew, how we grew up. For the most part, when I was in my 20s and 30s, I didn't care literally about America. It didn't affect me. I never thought of it that way. I didn't feel like I was part of it. I was vehemently opposed to war, and I think everybody is um, in their hearts. And so growing up on the heels of Vietnam and learning about that, it's like, no, I don't want to have anything to do with that. And I didn't want to have anything to do with saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, and I didn't know why back then. I really didn't. But I do. I mean, I do now. I don't pledge allegiance to a corporation. And I think we have a lot of things to sort out. But but Brian's point was that that I took it as a nation is its people. It's not the government. It's not the military industrial complex. It's not the lobbyists and the politicians. It's not that. It's the people. And I met. Most people I meet are good people. They're decent. They don't want to hurt anybody, and they want to live free. And I think specifically the way I talked about Gen X is I think most of us just did not care about what was going on with all that. I've always fought tyranny, though. When I was in kindergarten, I fought my teacher because she wanted me to do something I didn't want to do. And they had to call my mom, and I was little. So when he mentioned this the other day, it made me think of this in a different way. And instead of ignoring the nation and saying I was a separate from it, which I still am, but if I'm going to be here the rest of my years with people that I love, I've got to work harder. And maybe that means going to the streets and talking to people. Maybe it means producing content that gets more views because clearly, you know, 100 views. Um which I appreciate all your views. I, I love talking to you guys. But we I need, we need a lot more if we're going to do anything about this. And I don't think it's going to work in the digital realm. Brian alludes to that a little bit later. So just want to throw that in there. Right now I don't think it's coherent. So I may have to edit it. But carry on. I've said this before. And I say it again. This country is the last frontier. And I think it's going to go very very soon it's weak right now and I think they're gonna attack you within the next five years 2030 is my prediction um, before before 2030 you have to uh, you have to make a change as a people and I think unity is what America stands for or used to stand for 
and they have split that up uh, as they please these days. So unity is gone and that's what they need to get back. In Europe, unity doesn't matter much because we don't have a legal system and the firepower to back it up, but you still have that opportunity. So this is a, this is a wake up call to every American out there. Uh, remember what you stand for and what you're fighting for. Because I actually think Deep inside, you're the only ones in the world that truly knows what we what we are fighting for. You know, um, I think I've always been at the belief that if you have an opportunity to do something about tyranny, it's your obligation and your duty. And I hate to say that to you, all of you, but it's, it is your duty to stand up and do something about it. And I would be the first one to be here, standing up with you. Uh, I'm that guy. I like to be in the front line. I know people who like to be further back in line, and that's cool too. But I'm a, I'm a front line kind of guy. Uh, I actually think uh, that's exactly what they want us to believe, that we, have, we, that we can't do nothing and we have to wait until shit hits the fan and just be ready, minding our own business, taking care of our own family. I think that's exactly what they want. The unity is what they're afraid of. And right now they're splitting us in atoms. You know? uh, um, I think it will be too late if we wait for shit hits the fan. We need to get the word out, military, Often, uh, I think that's where the battle is because those are the people that's going to fight us in the end. And the more we can get those people on our side is, um, is how we win that battle. Because in the end it's people against people. It's not government against people. That's what many people misunderstand. It's not your government coming for you. It's not your government knocking on your door. It's your friends, family and neighbors and other people that you have to be aware of. That will be your future enemy, not the government. You know, and of course I know it will be police officers and all military come knocking at your door at some point, but it will be on the disguise of your friends, your neighbors and your family. Those are the people who will implement that that is what we need to do. So the more we can get in the stable of authorities, uh, and it doesn't have to be uh, uh, force authorities, I think if we can get to social workers, um, people within city halls, anything, we will have a chance. And uh, I'm not think I'm not, I'm not saying they should throw away their career. I think basically, make moles in there, and we do that by planting the seeds. And we only get to those people if we get out there, if we get among them. Those people are never led to our channels. They will never hear what we have to say. They will never understand what we're saying, even if they did. Uh, see a channel because it's just YouTube. So, but if you get there, man to man, face to face, eye to eye, and get trust, I think that's a key factor. If you can get people to trust you, they are more willing to listen to what you have to say. So, there you have it. These were just clips of a hour and a half live stream, I believe. And because YouTube doesn't let me link things in descriptions anymore, I'm going to pin the link to that uh, full live stream. If you get anything out of this, I encourage you to watch it. And if you watch it and you like it, subscribe to Brian. Um, let him know what you think about it. I think he's right. I look back and I haven't read it in a long time, but Gulag Archipelago, when they 
took over Alexander Shultzenitsyn, uh say that three times fast. But when they when the communists took over Russia and the Russian system, it wasn't government, as he's saying, or it wasn't communism, it was people. And we have a lot of confused people in the US right now. And we have a lot of very, very frightened people. And if you're going to attempt to help our nation, then you're going to have to be confident, secure in your knowledge, um, have have history that you can actually speak on, then you're going to have to be kind. And you're going to have to reach out to people that you don't like. And I don't know what else to say. I mean, I've got people in my life now that I'm concerned about their future. And I'm going to do what I can to try to get more people to understand where we're at and what's going on. And how we got here is important to me. Um, if you know how you got to a place, then you can change course and go a different way. Because it is. It's people. So there you go. Um, thank you for watching if you're still here. And... I will hopefully see you more frequently. Arrivederci.